let's talk about Shadow. In case you don't know, Shadow is basically a cloud computer. It's a full Windows 10 computer that you can do basically whatever you want on, just in either a different country or a different state if you're in the US. Basically, you just stream it over the internet, stream the video to your computer, and you send back your keyboard and mouse or controller inputs. And it's a lot better than I first expected. But speaking of Shadow, this video is brought to you by Shadow. Um, this is not a sponsorship, no money exchanged hands, however, they provided me access to a Shadow PC so that I could make this video. So, thank you. Right, so let me explain the concept again, but kind of better. So if you want to get into PC gaming, but you're not the kind of person who you know wants to watch the used markets and try and find the best price to get a graphics card at, or just mess with your in-game settings because maybe you bought a lower-end PC but you want to still play the newest games, this is all about no fuss, and it does pretty good at that. With a Shadow Boost subscription, you get a GPU equivalent to a GTX 1080, 256 gigs of SSD, which sounds small but it's not that bad, I'll explain why later, and a 4-core, 8-thread CPU. You can upgrade to something more powerful, but I don't know. I feel like I wouldn't have to be explaining Shadow to you if you want cloud computing that's that powerful. You can get an RTX 2080 or an RTX Titan, and presumably once the shortages end they'll do RTX 3000 series, uh, but I don't know, they get very expensive. So you likely already know about Shadow if you're looking for something that expensive, like getting up to, I think, like $40 a month, where a Shadow Boost is $12.99. You can get clients for Mac, Windows, Linux, iOS, Android, and Apple TV, which I, I think is all of them. And the experience is basically the same on all of them. While you're on the Shadow website, and once you've signed up for your account, you can pick whether you want a pre-set up Windows install or a custom one, where you get to go in the Windows settings menu. Once you're done on the website, you can spend the time Shadow takes, you know, making the virtual machine and stuff like that, in the app, where you can log in and kind of set everything up, change your streaming settings, and uh, yeah. Then you should be dropped straight onto the Windows desktop. The only two things that Shadow have added on, that you can see on top of Windows is Shadow Support and the Shadow Control Center. There's no bloatware or, you know, McAfee or whatever, it's just a Windows computer. So get downloading Steam, get your games installed with their gigabit internet, and uh, you're off to uh, have a good time. One thing to note though is that their gigabit internet, while yes gigabit, it's about 950 down and 100 up, you don't actually normally get that in Steam because of compression. So in case you don't know, compression is just when you're downloading the things from Steam, they are compressed so they use up less internet bandwidth and then your CPU decompresses them when they're on your computer. But in this case we have really fast internet and not a super fast CPU, and so you'll be limited depending on the game and how compressed it is. Although, you still download things very fast. On average, I see like 50 megabytes a second, and this means that the small SSD isn't too much of a problem. Okay, looks like we're going a uh, handheld mic for now, because the birds are extremely loud. Because you can just reinstall games and uninstall them thanks to cloud saves. So it would be nice to see a faster CPU on the base one so you could actually get faster download speeds, but it's it's very solid. But enough about tech specs, right? You're getting Shadow because you want just a simple, it just works, PC gaming experience. So does it just work? Well, on the first day I had a latency of about 50 milliseconds. I had 30 in setup, but it became 50 and I honestly don't really know why. But I played Halo 5 Forge, which yes, to be fair, most people aren't playing, and Rocket League, and the games were still definitely fun. It was not enough latency to make them not fun, but you really did feel hindered by the uh, latency. And then, next day, for whatever reason, it went back to 30 milliseconds, and has stayed there no matter what I'm doing on the Shadow PC, since. And so now, we're at a point where I can confidently say the average person will not notice it in something like Rocket League or a, a driving game where movements are a lot less 
instantaneous than a shooter. They're still very, very low latency, and you can feel it if you look for it, but a lot of people actually have TVs that add quite a bit of latency, so I'm willing to bet it won't be too different from their local gaming experience at home. Also, for reference, I'm in the north of England, and the server I'm connecting to is in France, so if you're physically closer to a server, you might get better latency than me. Another kind of surprising thing is that at 40 or 50 megabit, which most of your internet connections will be able to do, it actually looks near native on like a 27 inch 1080p monitor. And so if you're playing on a phone or a tablet, it should look pretty much perfect. Something to note about using it on a phone or tablet is that those typically have higher resolution screens than actually your PC monitor. And so games will be harder to run when running on say an iPad or a phone compared to your likely 1080p monitor. However, there are two ways of dealing with this. One, you can just go in the app and set your resolution to 1080p, but that'll likely give you black bars. So instead, you can change your game resolution scale down. This will mean you keep the aspect ratio of your screen, uh, while also keeping good performance. Although, there is a reason I've mainly been talking about doing it on mobile devices just then, which is that I didn't expect keyboard and mouse to actually work too well on Shadow, since uh, they're a lot faster to move, kind of, especially the mouse, than a controller. But I was wrong. Actually, CSGO is entirely playable. Of course, I still probably wouldn't recommend you playing CSGO since most people kind of, well, it's a game you play to win, normally. And it, it competitive play is off the table. It does definitively make you perform worse in CSGO. I did some testing, actually. And I, I did a few rounds all against expert bots, so the difficulty would be the same. I did it on a few different maps, and then I did that locally and on Shadow. And on Shadow, I averaged a score of 372. Whereas locally, I averaged a score of 416. So, yeah, it you are noticeably worse. And I averaged this. I did it on a bunch of, you know, I did a bunch of different rounds. It was consistent. But does that actually make it any less fun? Do I still recommend it? So that's a good question, but in my eyes, it's pretty obvious. If you want a cloud gaming PC, this is very, very compelling. It's three pounds a month more than Spotify, and it's cheaper than a 4K Netflix subscription. That's like the easiest recommendation for Shadow I could possibly give. Not only this, but like I mentioned before, lots of TVs actually add some even upwards of 100 milliseconds to the input, meaning actually if you're playing on Shadow on your phone or on a PC monitor, you could actually get significantly, really noticeably lower latency than when you're playing on your console in your living room, which is kind of funny. Also, if you're a game streamer, because Shadow has such huge upload speed, you can actually stream from OBS, like in your Shadow PC, so then your Twitch or YouTube stream will have really, really good quality which will be useful if you don't have particularly fast upload speeds. You can also even get legitimate pro work done. Now, it says a GTX 1080 equivalent, but that's in gaming. Most of them actually come with a Quadro P5000, which obviously in gaming is equivalent, but it's actually very significantly faster if you're doing pro work. And so, I've never ran the Blender benchmark before, but I, tr I really tried to get it working on the Shadow to try and give you some comparisons. I could not get it to work. I don't think this is the Shadow's fault. I've never used it before, but I could not get it to actually render without just crashing. Or I got it to work on BMW, but I got the wrong model, it seems, uh, that was way more detailed than all the others. It's I'm confused. I'm very sorry that I could not benchmark it, but if you look up uh, benchmark scores of Quadro P5000, that's the kind of pro performance you're likely to get with a Shadow. What I can do is show you Cinebench CPU, which I have obviously ran before, and that's not too great. That's similar performance to a 6th gen Core i5, but, but, are you actually likely to be bottlenecked by that? Not really. And so, Yes, the CPU is pretty weak for pro work, but for gaming, it's perfectly adequate. And the Shadow PC should still be good for GPU accelerated workloads. Although keep in mind, it does just have 12 gigs of RAM, which also is perfectly fine for gaming, but maybe limiting if you're video editing or rendering something. Anyway, 
Conclusion time. Shadow is actually a lot better than I thought it would be when I first heard about it. Now that I've tried it, I can recommend it to you. D genuinely. Like, the latency is really low enough that the average person won't even tell they're on a faraway computer. And I'm not acting like it's not there. Seriously. Like, it's... You can tell if you look for it, and if you're playing a faster game, or maybe you have really high ping or something. In those cases, not much you can do. But it's not enough to take the fun out of the game. It's still really good, and that's why I can recommend it. And I think everyone who uses a shadow would agree with me. The latency's there, it's not bad, and a lot of the time it's barely even noticeable. So, if you've been wanting to get into PC gaming without all the fuss, here you have it. $12.99 a month. Anyway, I've just had to turn the camera because the sun's finally coming up. But, um, yeah. Uh, I hope you liked this video. I really want to thank Shadow. It, <laughs> it felt so good. Um, to finally partnering with a company for, for something, even just one video. So, thanks, Shadow. And, uh, bye.